Did I tell you anything about the nature of the thing? And when I talked to you and we arranged this appointment, I didn't even ask you one thing. So well, uh, I went because I was sort of hesitate to go into it, but the uh, uh, fact remains that it's homosexuality, mm -hmm. and I want to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked with Art about it about a year ago last summer, and uh, um, when we had a rather long interview, and then he decided that I'd better see someone, but not him, because mm -hmm. the relationship was too close. And um, so, I, of course, I and this is the first I've gotten uh, down to business with it, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been thinking about it ever since, and I uh, am confused mentally. I go around in circles. I don't know where to start. And uh, I've looked backwards, just trying to find if I could find a cause if that would help any. It doesn't seem to, and I don't think I could find it if I wanted to. And uh, the, but the only thing I figured out was that uh, the important thing is to find out where I stand now and start from where I'm now, mm -hmm. rather than psychoanalytically or something, mm -hmm. go back in the past and try and dig up bones. I don't know. But the thing you're <coughs> curious about is that you do want to do something about the yes, but I don't know problem, but I don't know how. as you <laughs> tried to think it over, you sort of go round and round in circles. Mm -hmm. And have come to feel that maybe the most important thing for you is to try to figure out what's true right now, or what, what's the situation right now. Is that the... Yes, sort of, yes, and, and to, to start from where I am now rather than to... I see, rather than... To go back and try and find a cause or something, and then... Uh, you can't go back in the past and eradicate the cause and, and try and come up with uh, a past solution, shall we say. Of course, that's what I always want. That's what I suppose everybody wants, mm -hmm. an immediate solution or something, but I don't think it's going to be like that. That's what you wouldn't mind having, but... No. <laughs> so doubt if you'll find it. Well, I looked for it in music, and it was the same thing. I mean, I think it's sort of a carryover. I thought there was a key to... Uh, to how to be a good musician. There's no yeah. key, of course. You yeah. can't read it in a book. It's not <coughs> Did you feel as though in that area, too, you have a tendency to think now... Oh, there's there's an immediate key. solution. There's, mm -hmm. there's something that, that is going to make this thing all clear up and, and uh, make everything... If I find the thing, things. I'll be a good musician. Yeah. But gradually I've learned yeah. it. Just as it's that. ridiculous. <laughs> right. And also, I feel that, that all sorts of things are tied up. I mean... The one thing I found out when I went to art was that um, shortly after that interview, which was sort of a catharsis, uh, uh, I gained 10 pounds in a matter of two weeks, which I think, which gave me something to think about anyway from mm -hmm. the standpoint that mm -hmm. probably uh, problems I have in uh, thinking and music and anything else is all tied up. I mean, everything mm -hmm. is tied up very closely, problems with health or something. But there's some... Um, uh, <coughs> well, uh, when Art said something about, uh, he thought that it, it had crept into my music from the standpoint that uh, I was making mistakes where mistakes shouldn't be made. I mean, he says there's no reason for you to do these things, and I do them still. He says it's a form of self-punishment. Well, I don't know. But uh, uh, then, too, there's this... I think the thing is in the form of a neurosis. I want to, I'm afraid to go ahead. I've always been afraid to, of new things, mm -hmm. to to go into something entirely new. It's, it carries over a little bit in music. I'm sort of afraid to take up a new piece. I'm sort of a, uh, I'm afraid when at college, well, further back than that, actually, from high school going into college, I was rather afraid to go into the new situation and make all the new adjustments that had to be made. It wasn't so much coming to school down here, though. But you do feel a kind of characteristic of you that anything new, you... It has know, seemed to have been for a long time, I don't mm -hmm. know. Meeting new people, I did. Mm -hmm. Sort of curious about it. So you have... Uh, well, uh, the idea I wanted to give us was something that I'm confused mentally and I... Mm -hmm. Think straight. Mm -hmm. I have no match. We don't have any time. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
all the way through. Of course, there's a physiological element, which is simply, uh, who was it? Gide tried to justify it. It just can't be justified. It's like, but that's outside the realm of my experience, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I sort of get the feeling that you saying there are various cultural and intellectual considerations on this. Yes. That several of those are outside the realm of your own experience. Yeah. It's a very loaded, uh, just to use the word, it's a very loaded word because when you say that you're queer, it automatically sets you apart. You lose your individuality immediately and you become one of a horrible group. I mean, you... Uh, it, they say they're abnormal people, but they're really not. They're, they are, but they aren't. They're uh, perfectly ordinary in every other respect. Although their sexual outlook, of course, colors their outlook on um, everything else, and they'll be different from other normal people. But you feel that when you're labeled homosexual, then it's as though you're that no longer a person at all. You're I don't want to, that's why I don't like to use the word, because mm -hmm. uh, you lose your name, you lose everything. I mean, it's just... Uh, That label really destroys you as a person and just yeah. puts you in a class. Puts you in a uh, class that's that's not accepted. It's not honest. <coughs> well, I've had, I haven't, I myself haven't been put in that category ever because I've always been acting apart. I've never had any homosexual associates really. But yet when you hear people talking, you always make the connection mentally. Of course they don't know what they're talking about you. But, uh, maybe it's me that puts myself in the class alone. I don't know. But at least you're saying other people haven't put you in that category. It's just the no, realization within you of, of what that would mean. The only reason they don't is because they don't know. But they would except for a very rare few. Yeah, that, that is the feeling, though, that if they really knew, then they would put me in this awful, disapproved of yeah. class. That is, with, you know, with a lot of them, certainly with the family, it's true. With, uh, a lot of my friends, it's true, but some of them it isn't true at all. cycles of, of times when I'm more attracted to women, sometimes almost entirely heterosexual in our book. That happened at school I was before I came down here, but um, uh, for a while, for a short while, but then I all sorts of lapsed back into it. I don't know why. But it, it isn't, uh, maybe it's a retreat or something, I don't know. Or an escape, I don't know. <laughs> That's the kind of thing you don't understand. All you're quite sure of is that your feelings do change to some degree from time to time. Is that there have been periods when you've felt mm -hmm. quite strongly heterosexual mm -hmm. in interest. And other times when I guess it feels to you a little bit as though it was a going back or something like that. Well, this is just too much. Why, why do I bother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing hits me when walking down mm -hmm. the street or something. Mm -hmm. I just uh, give up. What am I going to do all this effort for? Yeah, what is, what is the use? And then I... It's mostly, it's mostly entirely mental. I mean, it's, it has nothing to do with relationships mm -hmm. and everything. It's just mm -hmm. sort of a... Mm -hmm. But of course, to all my... To, to lots of people, they say, well, that's absolute nonsense. You're not homosexual. You don't, you don't act that you don't go around with men. You're not... But it's the mental attitude. I mean, mm -hmm. I... Ridiculous. But you feel, yes, it's true that this isn't, doesn't have too much to do with what goes on outwardly in my no. relationships. It's something within me. 
you know, it's, it's for those people that can see it, it's, it's evidenced outwardly by a certain mm -hmm. lack of sincerity, maybe, mm -hmm. or something, a lack of, it's just, as I say, it's an act. Mm -hmm. And it gets to be uh, an act which I put on, I guess, for <coughs> uh, society. And it gets to be a drag because it takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be... It's hard to keep putting on an act. You think of... Uh, you always have to be thinking about not what you would ordinarily do, what you would naturally do, but what you would... What is the accepted thing to do, and you have to do that. I feel an offense that you... Always following a fairly involved script. Yeah. Whereas motivation is the one thing, and on the other hand is the, the purely insincere... Uh, actions that have no real basis in my personality. So, I mean, there's nothing... Mm -hmm. Sort of as though you are going in one direction, but this act that you can put on is going off yeah, in another, another direction. direction. Sometimes they come together, sometimes mm -hmm. they go further and further apart. <laughs> mm -hmm. When they go further apart, I think I stop dating and... Uh, I don't know if I'm that. Uh, I have all sorts of devices for escaping. I go to movies, I read books, I do all sorts of things that are... Hmm. Yeah.